Okay, let's look at the key equation from the first thermodynamics lecture. Delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. Effectively what we do here is take the first and the second laws of thermodynamics, bring them together to get delta G, Gibbs free energy. And by free, I mean energy that is freely available to participate in the reaction. Now when we're looking at things like the unfolding of proteins, there are thermodynamic contributions. And it is handy to be able to calculate delta H and also delta S. So what we've got to do is rearrange this equation to make either delta H the subject or delta S. So delta H would be equal to delta G plus T delta S and delta S will be equal to delta H minus delta G all over T. It's really important that you can rearrange this key equation to make delta H and delta S the subject. So let's do an example. Okay, this is the one that is up on the VLE from the first lecture. The macrocyclic effect. There's the key equation again, very important. The displacement of a tetradentate polyamine by a tetradentate macrocycle is a thermodynamically favoured process. We get a Gibbs of minus 30 kilojoules per mole. The entropy of the reaction is plus 70 joules per mole per Kelvin. Temperature, 298 Kelvin. So I want to know, what we need to calculate, is T delta S and delta H. So, T delta S, relatively straightforward. Temperature, 298 Kelvin. I'm going to put brackets in this to avoid complications. Multiplied by delta S, there it is, 70 joules per mole per Kelvin. And guess what happens to the Kelvin terms? Multiplied through. So, with my calculator, 298 times 70 gives me an answer 20,860 joules per mole. The ideal unit for T delta S actually is kilojoules per mole. So I divide by a thousand and to one decimal place plus, that's going to be quite important, plus 20.9 kilojoules per mole. So there's T delta S sorted. Now we want delta H. There's that key equation once again, which is delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. Okay, so rearrange that to make delta H the subject. Okay, delta G plus T delta S. Now from the question up here, we've been given delta G, so it's minus 30 kilojoules per mole. Once again, I'm going to put some brackets in in just a minute to avoid accidents. We've just calculated T delta S in kilojoules per mole. Again, I'm going to put some brackets in just to avoid accidents. So, using the old calculator, minus 30 plus 20.9 gives it an answer of minus 9.1 kilojoules per mole. It's the minus one. 